Hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to create a service in TypeScript and we're gonna run it on a local server called Light Server. It, this tutorial assumes that you have the basics of TypeScript. So if you haven't watched the previous intro videos, please go back and do so. So let's dive right in. All right, so we are in the folder called TS Service. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new file and I'm gonna call this file person. .ts, and this is where I'm going to put my class. So I'm going to define my class person. I'm going to create a static num, and originally it will be equal to zero. And I'm also going to give it an ID, which is going to be a number, and a quick constructor. And the constructor that I'm going to pass in, I'm just going to have two uh, public attributes. So I'm going to have a public name, which is a string, and I'm also going to have a public uh, age which is a number. So you can um, apply other design principles as you'd like. I'm going to keep it simple and I'm just going to keep all of my attributes public. Uh, you could uh, instead also have private variables and protected variables and, and so on. Uh, so anyways, uh, we're going to, when we run this constructor, assign this ID to be person dot num. And this is just going to keep track of the the ID, the current number of people that I have. And so I'm going to do person dot ID and plus plus, sorry, not ID, num plus plus, uh, the static variable, we're going to increase it. So we're essentially going to guarantee that each person has their own ID as we create this. Uh, I'm going to create another class. And the next class is going to be a controller. So I'm going to create a con class called person controller dot TS. And here I'm going to create an interface, first of all. So my interface for person uh, services, and these are the services that I'm going to provide for a person. So let's say I give the ability to add a person. And so the person is going to come from here. Um, and, and let's say the adding is a void. I'm not going to pass back anything after I add. Uh, and maybe I'm going to have a show all and show all allows us to be able to pass back an array of persons. Uh, I might have another one called delete here um, that is going to allow us to, hmm, let's see. So this is uh, going to be a void as well, but I'm going to need to pass in an ID. So an ID, which is a number. So I'm going to need to pass in an ID to specify which person I would like to delete. So you can probably imagine there's other things as well. I can have an edit function. I can have a, um, a search function, uh, whatever services that you'd want for, uh, for, for, this, uh, for this application. So I'm going to keep it simple here. Just create a person services that has those three things. And I'm just going to implement those three and let's see what we get. All right, so I'm going to create another class here called, uh, I'm going to call it person uh, controller. All right, maybe I should call it people controller uh, just because it's it controls the people that I have in my application. Uh, people controller, and it's going to implement this person services. All right, so in here, I want to keep track of uh, the people controller. Now, notice that it's complaining that I'm not implementing the service uh, properly because of this interface. So I'm going to need to implement the add uh, function. And so I need to pass in a person and I need to actually implement this somehow. Uh, so I'm gonna do that later. I'm gonna need to do a show all, which is a person. I need to pass back a person. And I also need to delete. And this delete, I'm gonna need to pass in an ID, which is a number, and I need to somehow delete this person. Now, the implementation is totally up to you. We can use uh, different layers of uh, structures as well. So in our case, I'm just gonna keep it simple and I'm going to have a people variable. So people is gonna be person, an array of people, an array of person objects. So notice here that I the um, TypeScript here actually knows that our person class is within the same folder. Now, in a second, when we actually modularize uh, all of this, it may not know that this person class exists, but for now it does. So we'll just work with it as is. And so uh, I'm going to make another constructor here. So I'll have a constructor, and this constructor is going to be empty. I'm not going to pass in anything for this constructor, uh, other than the fact that I'm going to make uh, initialize this dot people so this dot people is going to be initialized to be an empty array at the very beginning i'm just going to forget about it and now i want to add i, I want to uh, write in the logic to add to show all as well as the delete so i'm going to start with show all show all actually is pretty simple uh, show all all we're really doing is we are uh, we are going to return um this people all right so this is this is all we're uh, all we're doing here and it should be this stuff people and so that's that's what we're going to pass back all right so what happens when we try to add a person so let's implement the uh the, the stuff in there that requires us to add so this is since this is just an array of uh, person class we'll just do this stuff people and then dot push and i'm going to push this person onto the array 
that's pretty much all I need to do. Um, maybe I can uh, do a console.log just for testing purposes. Uh, I can say added, and then we will do this p.id. All right, so, th so this ID is going to identify each person. So if you take a look at our class, our ID number is going to uh, auto increment every single time. So this is going to uniquely identify this person. I'm just gonna uh, console.log this just to give a little bit of feedback. All right, so we will uh, complete this by doing the array and we'll do this.people is equal to this.people. And now if we wanted to uh, check the ID, so we'll do the filter. Uh, now filter takes in a person, or at least in this case, it takes in a person. So it goes through all of this dot people for every p uh, person that's in here. And we want to write a function, a callback function here that returns true if we want to keep this person. So I'm going to return uh, whether p dot id, so this, this uh, person that exists, is not equal to um, this id number. All right, so if it's not equal to the ID number, I do want to keep them. But if they are equal, then I want to filter them away. So hopefully this is the right uh, logic to uh, to delete this person. And we're going to test it out in one second. Um, so this is uh, basically our, our way of creating this uh, people array. Now, in addition to this, maybe I want this data to be persistent. So instead of just pushing it to the people array, which when we turn off our application, the person is going to disappear. Uh, maybe I should just save it in the local storage. Actually, this might not persist either, but we'll just do local storage uh, dot, we'll call it user array. And is equal to, now I'm going to stringify this just to, uh, just to store it. So I'm going to stringify this dot people. Now this is not going to uh, append. So this actually overwrites whatever we had. So this is actually rendering this pretty useless, but you, you can get the idea. You can actually write some code to append it. So I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Um, and similarly in here, instead of returning this dot people, I'm going to take whatever is in the user, uh, the, the user array. Okay. So we'll, we'll keep this here just so that we can reference it. And we're going to return, uh, we'll do the JSON dot parse, and then we'll take the local storage and then the user array. So that looks pretty good. Um, if we delete, then I'm going to filter this out. But then afterwards, I'm also going to uh, let's update the local storage somehow. So we'll do local storage dot user array uh, equals, and then I'll again do this uh, stringify this dot people. All right. So hopefully this is going to work out. All right. Good. So I have my controller. So I have my add, show all, and delete. Now again, you could. Uh, also write some code for edit and search and other things uh, that you want in this controller. Uh, but for now, I'll just leave it as this. And then the next step that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to reference a main uh, a main module. So we will add another add another file in here. We'll call it main.ts. So the main.ts file, I'm going to create a person controller or people controller is equal to new and then people controller. And I'm going to just make an instance of this. And this PC is the one that's going to provide all the services for me. And so I'm going to create a uh, two buttons uh, a little bit later on. So I'm just going to do a document dot get element by ID. Uh, I'm going to remember that I need to do a create button. Uh, this create button, I'm going to do dot add event listener. And then when I do a click event, so when I perform a click event, I want to run a function. So this is an event listener for that click event. And what I want to do is let's create a var called p, I'll call it per, this new person. I'm going to create a new person um, and I'm just going to test it. I mean, in reality, you would probably want this to be brought in at some point, like uh, taking some value from the HTML file. I'm just going to call this person Bob. And uh, I think I also need an age for Bob. So let's say Bob is 25 and I'm going to do pc.add this person. All right. So you can imagine that when I, when I uh, click this create button, um, that this add function is going to be invoked. And this add function just simply adds this person to the, the array as well as puts them into local storage. All right. Uh, the other thing you may have noticed is as I was typing this, um, this uh, question mark was placed automatically. And the reason for that is right now I don't have this create button. So TypeScript is smart enough to know that I, I, I do actually need this. So uh, instead of question mark, I'm actually going to force it to not give me an error. So notice that if I, if I leave this out, this is going to give me an error because it doesn't know what the create element is, right? So it doesn't have access to the HTML file and it doesn't know that this thing actually exists. So that could be a problem. So I'm just going to do an exclamation mark, which means don't worry, this is going to work, right? So I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to force it to not give me an error. And then I'm going to do another button, which allows me to call the, so I'll do the get element by ID again. And this one will call it get all, 
right? So we'll do a create and we'll also do a get all. And then again, we will do an add event listener. Notice that it did actually add a question mark again for me. Uh, so this time when I click on this, I will invoke this function. And this function is going to be a console.log uh, and we'll just log the, the show all function. Okay, so we'll do PC show all. Now, in reality, this you would probably want to put, print it out in your DOM uh, somehow, but I think this works for me for at least for now. All right, so I'm going to save it and hopefully this is going to work. Uh, I'm going to create one more file just for the index, just for showing the index. So I'm going to do index.html uh, and in this in index.html, I'm going to create an HTML5 file and I'm just going to call it um, people app. Okay, and this is going to be my people app. In here, I'm going to put two buttons that allow me to uh, to play around with these features, just to test these features out. Um, I am going to go to Bootstrap right now and just make sure this thing looks a little bit uh, better. So I'm going to copy over the link for Bootstrap. And now in my body, I will do uh, a container. I'll do div, and div is going to have a class called container. And And in this container, I'm going to have a couple of buttons. Um, I'm going to create a button. And if you remember earlier, I wanted the ID to be called create. So one of the buttons is going to be create. Um, I'm going to just add a little bit of bootstrap on here. It's going to be a button. It's going to be a button primary. And uh, let's make it a large button and also a block button. Okay, so this is going to be our button. And it's going to say create in the middle. Um, I'm going to copy the same thing over and maybe give it a little bit of room, maybe two lines. You should probably use CSS for this, um, but here we're gonna do get all. I think that's what I called it. So get all, um, and this is gonna be the get all button. All right, so let's just uh, for one second check if this works and then, or this page is working. And uh, we're just going to open up with Finder and I'm just gonna open this up and we have this uh, create and get all. Great, so I'm gonna open up the inspector and let's take a look at what the console is going to tell me. All right, so when I click on create, uh, what, basically what I wanna do is for it to create uh, Bob and have the feedback. So if you notice what happens when we call add, we're gonna say added and then whatever the ID is, uh, we're also going to, uh, when we call show all, so when we click on the other button, uh, we wanna be able to have uh, the local storage parse, parsed and then uh, return to us. And in main, what's happening is I'm just gonna put it into the console. All right, so, um, the last thing we're going to need to do is you notice that these uh, these buttons are not connected to anything, right? So they're, they're not really connected to this functionality. So what I need to do is connect this to the functionality. And to do that, I'm going to come uh, down here uh, right before the, the body. Uh, we could actually add it in the head as well. But uh, since I, I just want to add it at the very end here, just just to show you the sequence. Uh, so I'm going to create that I'm going to have the source and the source that I'm going to import first is this person.ts. So I have to know about this person.ts. This is kind of like our model. Right. And then I'm going to have another script tag, and this is going to be our source. And the source, uh, we're going to have the person controller second. So in order for a person controller to work, it would first have to know about person, right? So I have to know the, the, the class definition, right, before I import the person controller. And then thirdly, I'm going to import the main. Oh, actually, before I uh, before I make a mistake, I actually have to import the, the JS files and the... Um, and the thing that we have to know about this is that we have to, I'm, I'm just going to copy this in here. Okay. So we're going to paste in here our ts.config file. And uh, our ts.config is just, we're going to target ES6 and the, we're going to use a system module, which I'm going to show you in one second. And then I'm going to keep strict as being true. All right. So let's come over here and we'll pull up our terminal and we will do our tsc-w, which is going to keep track of all of our ts files. Hopefully I don't have any errors and you'll see that all of the js files is going to be compiled for me. And so my index is going to pull those in. So let's see if this works. We're going to come over to here and we're going to click on create. And you can see added zero, added one, added two, and so on. If we do a get all, it's just going to show me all of this. Oh, um, Here we go. All right, so the reason was because I didn't call the function properly. So if we reset this, let's try it one more time. So I press create, it'll say add a zero, add a one, add a two. And then if I do get all, it's gonna show me that we have these people that's added. Now, in fact, if we go over to our application and we take a look at our local storage, 
our local storage should show me that we have this user array that is stored with the same name Bob, uh, but the IDs are different. All right, so this is kind of just the structure I wanted to show you of a service, uh, but you can probably be more uh, creative with this and you can add other things as well. All right, so one last thing that I wanted to show you is this is not really modular uh, because all we're really doing is we are pulling these JavaScript files backwards, right, from the way that we've defined them. So what we want to do is modularize this a little bit better, and I want to add some uh, add a system module in here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is let's go back uh, backwards into our implementation, and first we'll go into our person. .ts. And for this class, great, we've created it, but we're going to export it for the purposes of usage for other uh, for other uh, classes as well. So you'll notice that right away, um, that person controller, there is an error because now it doesn't understand what person is. And that's because we've exported it. Uh, and the only way that we can get access to this person now is through um, uh, importing it into the module. So we'll go into person controller. And instead of just knowing what person is, we need to import it. So I'm going to first do an import. I'm going to import everything as model. And this is our model from, and then we will choose our person. Uh, so it'll it'll import that. Now it's imported as model, and now we can do import person. So I'm going to now define what a person is through model dot person. All right, great. So I've imported person, so I've defined that within this scope, the person is going to be brought in from that definition, from the definition of person.ts. So if we look down here, all our errors are good, um, our constructor looks good, and everything else is good. So I'm going to save this, and then next level up, I'm going to go to main, I'm going to do the same thing, because right now it doesn't know what our people controller is, so let's define for it what the people controller is. Now, here, just to uh, show you another way that we can do import, I can do uh, import, and then people controller. So this is taking people controller from the definition that I've given for person controller. So in person controller, there is a people controller, I think. I think we need another import. So we'll do an import uh, person from person. And I think what we need here is we need to export. All right, so we forgot to export the, the people controller. So now it should work. All right, great. Okay, so next we're going to go to the index and now we need the help of a module. So we're going to use a system module. So uh, the way that we're going to do this is I'm going to include a CDN that is online and we're going to need to copy that CDN as a script. And this is going to help us to uh, do the import. So this is our script that comes from our CDN and this is a, uh, a system.js file that we're bringing in called system.js. So I'm importing the, the 0.19.47 version of this. That's really the only one I've, I've gotten to work successfully all the time. Uh, uh, so the next thing we'll do is just add a, a simple script here so that we're telling it to import the, the right file. So we're going to do type is equal to we'll do text slash JavaScript. And in our text.javascript, we're going to do system.default uh, JS extensions equals to true. You got to make sure that we spell that correctly. Um, and also system.import. And then now we're going to import the file that is associated with main. So it's going to we're going to automatically import the main. And since main already imports everything else, this is the only thing that we have to that we have to do. All right. So hopefully this is going to do exactly the same as what we had before. Now the only difference here, and I'm just going to uh, I'm going to stop uh, writing the the files to JS. Uh, the only thing here is that the system.js uh, module requires the server to be running. So it has to be responding in order for this uh, to, to work. So we're going to run light server. Okay, so light server is something that we installed earlier when we were installing TypeScript. So when we invoke light server, automatically, it's going to look for a file called index.html, and it's going to open it. So when we open this up, uh, it should actually bring that up. And if we take a look at our console, um, oh, it didn't load fave icon. So um, let's see if I can find a fave icon very quickly here. All right, so I just uh, imported a Minecraft uh, fave icon here. Um, so if I go back to here, um, so our fave icon is is there. Uh, we're going to hit create, and it's added people for me, right? And then get all should be working as well. So there we go. So this is how we're going to create a service in TypeScript. All right, so that's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.